Hey, what's up everyone on YouTube? This is DJ Nee, and today I'm going to be putting that InnoFader PNP into this Tractor S4 MK2. Shout out to Kevin at AGI Pro DJ. If you need any gear, you got to go to AGI. They're the best in the world in terms of customer service, delivery times, everything else under the sun, you name it. Been dealing with them for years. So, AGI, what's up? Before I get started, I'm going to do a quick scratch test with the regular stock fader, and then I'm going to do a probably a time lapse of me actually fitting the fader in, the new fader. I got my little screwdriver here, my static little wristband over here, and we're going to get busy with that in a bit. But before that, I'll play a couple scratch samples over the same beat, then I'm going to pop the inner fader in, and then we're going to do the same thing and see if there's actually a difference in how clean I sound in terms of cutting and scratching. And then, pretty much from there on, it's party time. So, I'm gonna plug the sound in, and we'll do the quick scratch test. So that's test number one complete. That's before Inno Fader, and now we're gonna switch up to when I do get the Inno Fader in. Pop the cork and roll up the hash. Move your body, body, body. 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 Body.
Alright, real quick before I do the little scratch test, um, it took me a pretty long time to figure out how to get the settings perfect the way I wanted it in terms of the cutting distance and the curve because obviously with the Tractor S4 there is no curve adjust knob it's just the setting within Tractor itself and mine's always set to the sharpest possible so it took me figuring out the Innofader itself on the back of it it does come with some instructions actually so over here oopsies, you will actually see you know it has a little pattern that you do so it's A, B, A, C for you know whatever it may be if it's increasing the lag decreasing the lag polarity so that's the that's the downside to a custom fader it really takes some dialing in on a, a, opposed to just a regular fader that you kinda just pop in and go for but I got it down did a quick test in terms of everything working it's working fine what I didn't mention at the beginning which I should have is if you're gonna do something like this you're 100% gonna void your warranty so if you're prepared to do that, fine, go ahead, pop in an NO fader or an upgrade, which is pretty much, you know, advisable if you want to do a lot of heavy scratching and if you're going to use turntables or CDJs like I am with this unit at clubs for DVS. Other than that, you know, quick, easy, overall, I think it's taken me an hour to do from start to finish in terms of putting pulling all the screws out. There's so many screws and I don't know why. This is so much harder than redoing my Rain 62 when I have to service that. That's so quick. Literally that's four four screws, not bolts. Um, and this has about 12 screws at the back. So yeah, without further, I'm going to just get to the test because that's kind of what everyone wants to see. So let's give it a go. Whoa, 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 